Oh boy, man. Frank Saravelli coming in here, dropping the heat, dropping the knowledge as to the newest Vancouver Canucks trade rumor scoop. Let's go over JT Miller once again. The Vancouver Canucks best forward this season, the top point guy on the team, a point per game player, and just an overall work ethic horse out there. Work ethic horse. I don't know why I said that. Ah, uh, it's because he's got a good work ethic and he's a workhorse at the same time. That kind of makes sense, right? So, Frank Saravelli a few days ago had a little bit of a thing on JT Miller in the media where he said that the New York Rangers were all over this guy. And that was a conversation we had on this channel when it was said it's cool because Miller was initially drafted by the New York Rangers, and should the Rangers acquire Miller again, it would be a nice reuniting after he spent time with two other NHL teams. He certainly is not the same player than he was when the Rangers initially traded him all those years ago, but should they get him back, it would be a very nice story to see. I mean, of course, you know, I'm a Canucks fan, so I wouldn't want to see that happen unless the trade return was pretty significant. But New York has indeed been one of those teams that has been snooping around on Miller. They really want him, according to what Saravelli had to say. Now, Frank Saravelli was put onto Sportsnet 650 yesterday, and he had himself even more things to talk about when it came to Miller and the trade targets that could be in the mix. There are three other teams that I've heard have also been interested in Miller. They're the Boston Bruins, the Minnesota Wild, and Calgary Flames. Okay, so let's go over the three teams, the new teams that are involved in the JT Miller talks, and if we have some time, we'll go over a few other things because there are some other trade rumors that Satya Shah went out there and said, and Sarah Vailey also kind of labeled a few other things here on the 650 hit that I thought were important as well. But either way, Boston, Minnesota, and Calgary are the three other teams that are apparently involved in the JT Miller trade talks, and some of these make a lot more sense than others. For the Calgary Flames in particular, this is a team that, to me, I kind of don't really see why they would be interested in a Miller, mostly because if you're going to go out there, and this is kind of my own personal philosophy when it comes to building a team and going forward into the playoffs with rentals and whatnot, if you're going to go out there and acquire deadline pieces guys that get added onto your team within the last month or two of the season in order to help you make a playoff push and actually do well in the postseason. These guys might have one, might have zero years remaining on their contract after the year you acquire him. And in my opinion, you don't really go out there and try to get players like JT Miller, like Blake Coleman's, like Arturi Lekkonen's, like Tyler Toffoli's in 2019, for example, or was it 2020? It was 2020, right? You don't try to get these kinds of players unless you are a definitive playoff team. You can't be a tweener team, barely making the NHL play-in series, and actually making these types of trades. That's kind of one of the mistakes that I thought the Canucks did with Tyler Toffoli all those years ago, back when Jim Benning was at the helm. The fact that they even made that Tyler Toffoli trade was a problem in and of itself because the team wasn't already a playoff team. Calgary is sort of in that position right now, in my opinion. They are fourth in the Pacific Division, tied with San Jose with 44 points, although they do have five fewer games played. So although their record is good enough to be a playoff team technically, this team to me is not in that solidified playoff contender position where I would feel comfortable saying, okay, yeah, the Flames need to go after and they need to get some rentals and they need to get guys that can help them out in the playoffs because... To me, they're just not that Tampa team. To me, they're just not that Toronto. To me, they're not that Boston team that has consistently made the playoffs year in and year out, and as a result, have consistently gotten playoff rentals that have helped them out in the postseason. Now, Miller is a little different, as we noted, because he does have an extra year in his contract, so this isn't really a short-term rental situation here. There is another year. But for Calgary, it's kind of funny because I don't really think... The Calgary Flames, to me, are one of those teams that could actually be that team. Sarah Vailey thinks the return for Miller could be more than a first-round pick and a top prospect. So if we're talking a first, a top prospect, and a second, or whatever else it is, kind of comes to your mind as well, I don't really know how I feel about the Calgary Flames and this return, because they do have some prospects I like. I like Jakob Pelche. I do like Connor Zari a lot. I do like Matthew Coronado. But... 
a first Coronado and a second for Miller. Is that something you'd be willing to do? Let me know in the comments below if that is so. But going over onto the other two teams here, the Minnesota Wild are one that I'm not too surprised to see on here. They're doing really well. They're a bona fide playoff team, in my opinion, even though they're fourth in the Central, but that's because... I mean, look at the point share of the top guys here in this division. 61 for Colorado, 55 for the Blues and the Predators, and then 53 in 38 games played for Minnesota. Yeah, they're a good team right here. Furthermore, it was just as far back as a few months ago when we had these JT Miller for Kevin Fiala trade rumors that sparked up, and that was a conversation we also covered on this YouTube channel as well, so you can go ahead and check out that video if you want to see my thoughts on that subject. Spoiler alert, I don't really think Kevin Fiala for Miller is a good trade, but if you're going to go out there and say, okay, a first-round prospect and a first-round pick, so... I mean, the Wild have some really good prospects in their pipeline. You want to talk about Marco Rossi, you want to talk about Matthew Boldy, you want to talk about Adam Beckman, you want to talk about Carson Lambos and Jesper Wallstead. There are some very, very good prospects in the Minnesota Wild system. So, hey, if you're going to go out there and say that Minnesota is going to be the team to pay a first-round pick and a top prospect and more for Miller, as long as it's not a one-for-one -one Fiala for Miller, I'm kind of good with it. So, Minnesota... Hey, be my guest. Talk to me in the comments section. What do you think about the Minnesota Wild and this entire trade discussion over here? As for the final team, the Boston Bruins involved on these talks right here, the Bruins are an interesting team. And the reason I say that is because they're currently fourth place in the Atlantic Division with 50 points in 39 games played. They are indeed in a playoff spot, but they are indeed technically the worst team in the playoff spot right now. Now, that's not really something that I think is going to change anytime soon, because they do have an 8-point lead over the Detroit Red Wings, and it gets even crazier when you look at the Bruins and the other teams. I mean, the Sabres are behind by, what is that, 17 points? And you take a look at the other teams vying for that last wild card. Columbus is also behind by, how much is that, 13 points? So... The Eastern playoff picture is pretty much set in stone right now, and Boston just happens to be the last place team there. Boston, to me, is a team that doesn't really have too many great prospects. You take a look at the guys that they've drafted as of late and see who is in their system, and it's really bare this coverage that this team has had over the past few years over here, and... I mean, look, Fabian Lisella is good. He's a first-round guy from 2021. But then going back, their next first-round pick is John Beecher. The pick before that is Erho Vakaninen. And then you have Charlie McAvoy, whom they're probably not going to trade. He's not even a prospect anymore. So, to me, Boston just doesn't have suitable assets in order to make this kind of trade, especially if that price is a legit top prospect, plus a first, plus something else. If you really want to go out there and start labeling it, I'd say that probably only Minnesota and New York have what it takes, unless you count a Matthew Coronado or a Jakob Pelche from Calgary as being sufficient enough for a prospect, which I'm pretty sure some people might, so go ahead and talk to me in the comments what do you think about that. But also, because Calgary is Calgary, and they are just a border away from Vancouver. I start thinking about what Mike Gillis and co. did back in 2013 when they traded Corey Schneider to the Devils in exchange for the ninth overall pick, which became Bo Horvat. In that situation, the Edmonton Oilers were actually offering so much more for Corey Schneider, but Gillis did not trade Schneider over to Edmonton because they didn't want that guy to be playing Vancouver as many times as the Oilers played the Canucks in a given year. They traded him to the East for a significantly lower price, which was only one pick because they wanted that luxury of not having to see him all too much. Maybe there's somewhat of a similar aspect going on here with a Miller and Calgary because... I mean, come on, Miller has an extra year on his contract. He's going to probably light it up with the Flames and contribute to the Calgary Canucks as much as Tanev and Markstrom and Levo and all those other guys had. And maybe it'll be Tyler Toffoli 2.0, where Montreal is playing Vancouver every other game because it's the Canadian division and Tyler Toffoli is lighting up Montreal, or lighting up Vancouver every time they play. I don't know if the Canucks would really want to go out there and say that that's a reason to avoid a trade with Calgary, but it is something to think about. So talk to me in the comments what do you think about 
JT Miller and these teams that are involved in trade discussions with the Vancouver Canucks on Miller. We've got the Minnesota Wild, we've got ourselves the Boston Bruins, we've got ourselves the Calgary Flames, and of course the New York Rangers are the first team that started this all. So there you go, trendsetters. New York, you always are. Let me know in the comments if any of these teams are the teams that get it done. What would you want for a JT Miller if the price is indeed what Sarah Bailey laid out? Also, if you're a fan of any of the teams that we discussed in this video, hey, what is the most you would be willing to give up for a Miller? And would you actually want a Miller in the first place? Tell me in the comment section all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vitrage Rolls 99. And bye.